Nothing like a podcast starting on time. That sounds like the beginning of a really good rhyme. I think we just did it right there. <laughs> well, let's see, we do this then. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 117 for Thursday, the 2nd of March, 2017. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's David, and wait, no, wait. Oh, not me. The, the windows not are messed me. up. What's up, everybody? Can't, you're in the middle this time. What's? Damn it, Skype. Fucking Skype, hey. man. What's going on, guys? How you doing, dude? You uh, had me... Like this arm here, I was tweeting, and you push the button, and it's like, oh, wait, is it happening? Yeah, it's that's, happening. That's 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 what I do, man. <laughs> so we have David Majors, aka they, or what is it? Just call me DJM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> See, Twitter, it, it, the famous. Were all, we were already going so well in the pre-show. It's not just call me DJM for the love of. <clears throat> it's. Guys, guys, just call me DJM. That's what he said. That'll work. Got it. Okay, it's, it's, DJM is with us, guys. <laughs> Welcome. I'm. How's I, it going? I, I am thoroughly confused, so it must be ritual every <laughs> time. Um. Hey, I'm gonna start things off by saying a little something like this. And it didn't work. Of course, it didn't work. Alexa, she just turn me. on Ritual Misery. Ah, she can't hear you. She can barely hear me. <laughs> so, um, so what's supposed to happen? Throughout Alexa my owes house, me money. Yeah, throughout my house, I have a uh, a little bit of red lights in random places. Not so random. There's one outside the door of my office. There's one at the bottom of the stairs. And there's one upstairs in the kitchen, which is just directly above me. So when I turn on Ritual Misery... It uh, it bri brightens the room up with a little bit of red. Let's everybody know that I'm recording to stay the hell out of my office and stop pounding on the floor upstairs. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. But you know, the first thing that came to my mind was Roxanne. <laughs> you don't have to turn on the red light. Okay, somebody talk so that it stops this. I I have a couple of singles. Of is is because I figured <laughs> it is kind of late here. Is, is this? Is this that kind of podcast? Because I'm only slightly prepared for that kind of thing. Well, I mean, only it, slightly. It, it only occasionally devolves into that. Oh, uh, okay. No problem. <laughs> As in, like, every time. So um, th that's kind of kind of one of the things that I've got going on this weekend. Uh, man, it's been it's been a fun week. It's been a crazy week. It's been a, a hellacious week. How have you guys been doing? Uh, well, I, you know... <laughs> I've been super busy getting ready for next week, um, as well as trying to get ready for David's appearance. So it was like this double duty thing going on. And the reason that we are putting so much time and effort into next week is that we are putting on a live show at South by Southwest in Austin. Mm -hmm. So we one had to day, get, one we had day. To get ready. <laughs> and, uh, so just as a preview, I am wearing one of the brand new ritual misery t-shirts that commemorates the live show. So I'm wearing it a week early. So it's like a sneak preview of the shirt. Uh, man, we got, we got all kinds of stuff planned for next week. We'll get into that later in the show, but David, we want to know how you're doing and what you've been up to this week. My week has been absolutely fucking terrible <laughs> for the lack of a better term. <laughs> oh man. Uh, for those of you out there that may not know pretty much Everyone east of the Mississippi this time of year usually comes down with some kind of sickness or illness or upper respiratory flu slash cold slash almost pneumonia type of thing. And I'm still kind of not 100% mm. mm -hmm. with the disclaimer that I do four other podcasts, including guesting on this very podcast, Pain Monopoly. <laughs> it's been a bit of a struggle. <laughs> Not gonna lie, <laughs> that sucks, man. Yeah, I had something about a week or, or so ago. Yeah, I guess it was. I guess it was last weekend. I was pretty much bedridden, and it was, it was awful, man. It was like migraines and just feeling like total crap. 
for, for the, and for th- the record, through I the magic music. and the power of editing, um, most recently on one of my shows, It's in Season, I actually threw up during the podcast. Oh, God. That and, sounds good, man. But hey, I can edit. I can edit like a you know what. So, so well, you know nobody what? Nobody caught it. What Amos and I, what Amos and I would have done, we totally would have made that a patron exclusive. <laughs> well, I did the Patreon thing for a minute in 2016, but eh. Yeah, you gonna bring it back? No, no, no. Ah, uh, what? Pa- sure. Yeah, <laughs> no. I, I, I figure what I do is, is pretty much put together by you know chewing gum, popsicle sticks, and my own. Angst, and and that's pretty much enough. All right, you I, I got be right. more prepared I, than we are. In stop. Fact. I got one of yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one of stop my co-hosts on mic, and stop. I'm keeping my website up, and that's that's pretty much it. I I don't need a Patreon. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say stop. Uh, stop telling everybody our secrets, man. That's that's how we build this show. <laughs> oh, right. Um, I uh, I I enjoy being sick. What? Oh, okay. So, so for the, for the audio only listeners, he is. <laughs> Uh, voraciously <laughs> shaking his head in the negative. <laughs> um, although, I mean, I have been sick in my life, so much so that in, in the military we have mil- medical records. And it's like a hospital record, except it's just this big folder of paper. Mm-hmm. Kent, mm-hmm. when you retired, do you know how many how, ma- how big your medical record was? Man, see, I never go to the hospital. Right. I don't get hurt that often. Mine was probably like, I don't know, two or three inches thick. Okay. Okay. Most of that was like yearly physicals and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I I only have one volume, <laughs> a- a- according to my my doctors here, because the other two volumes have been misplaced. Oh my! God. That that sounds about right. That yeah. Sounds Luckily, about right. Luckily, uh, my wife knows somebody from Texas where I used to live, and they called over there and said, "Oh yeah, they're sitting right here. I found them." Oh. But, well, at least they still exist. Yes, yes. Uh, but that, that was the second of two paperwork kerfuffles I went through this week. The first one. Wait, 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 wait. You're, you're telling me you had paperwork kerfuffles oh, yeah. involving the military? Oh, yeah. Go. <laughs> Come on. What are you talking about? My, my ticket to South By is actually being paid for by the military because I went from an overseas assignment to another overseas assignment. It's a little little deal we get. Um, and I'm using I'm using mine for South by. Nice. I have to do a bunch of paperwork, and it has to go through a bunch of people in order to get those free tickets. And that paperwork was all turned in early last week. Yesterday, I went and found out that all that paperwork was lost late last week. So, mm. if I didn't have a copy of it, I wouldn't be going to South by. That's the, that's the, essentially the moral of that story. Yes. For all of you military members, if you don't have a copy of everything in your record, you are fucking up. Yeah. You're, you're, you're nope. have, a, have a hard copy, scan it to a PDF, <laughs> yep. and just put that have a hard copy up. and a soft copy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Keep everything. Oh, yeah. So, so, David, you were in the military. Uh, I was. I was. Tell, uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. What did you, what did you do? Uh, I had what some kids might call a gap year, but uh, in 2003, I was in the Air Force. I did four years from 2003 to 2007, uh, and I was an IT guy uh, by and large. I did the help desk stuff. I did the network admin stuff. I made the trouble tickets. I answered the trouble tickets. I talked with all of the corporations about all of the stuff the base I was on needed, I was occasionally the on-call person when stuff broke. I was the catch-all IT person for quite a few years, and I enjoyed it, and I still do it today, just not in uniform. Right on. That's that's pretty cool, man. Uh, a lot of people, when when I'll tell a, a rando that I'm in the Air Force, they're like, oh, really? What what airplane do you fly? Do, do you fly? <laughs> <laughs> And see, and that's that's the thing. It, like Amos and I have it kind of easy, I guess, because we're not pilots, but we're we, you know we're maintainers, we're aircraft maintainers, so we work on the airplanes. But a lot of you know, and a lot of people get that right away. But when somebody like you, an IT guy, 
when they say, what do you fly? Like, oh, I don't. I, uh, you know, I work the help desk. Like, I, what? I'm, what are you talking about? That's, that's an Air Force thing? What do you, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are still some that are not contracted out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I was one of them. And, and eventually I became one of them that actually wasn't sitting at the help desk all day because oh, God, that can drive a man mad. Yeah, no doubt. Did you get to do anything like really cool? Did you get to go to any cool overseas places or anything? See, that is exactly why I did not re-enlist after four years, because I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried. But I was at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, just outside of the city of Omaha, near a little city called Bellevue. And there was a saying about Offutt Air Force Base, and that's, once you get off it, you don't get off it. Uh, I yeah. found this to be true with quite a few people that were near retirement. They, they might have had the occasional trip somewhere else, maybe like a year in Korea or something, but they always ended up back at off at Air Force Base. <sighs> so young 20, 21-year-old DJM put in for assignment after assignment. It could have been anywhere. Send me to Korea for a year. Send me to Iraq for six months. Send yep. me somewhere else in the United States. I don't care. Just send me somewhere. And if you don't, I'm so not re-enlisting. Yeah. And they didn't, that's pretty much how it went. Yeah. I, I can I can yeah. speak from experience uh, twice over that a year in, in Korea is not the worst case scenario. Yeah. I, I was up for it. I was totally open to it. But it just never came about. Yeah. The, the yeah. closest I got was almost a... 90 day assignment at Baghdad International Airport almost but almost. at the at the last minute they took my supervisor instead that's ah. uh, i mean i mean and that almost counts right that, that's <laughs> almost <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean honestly that's the, the world travel is what kept me in for 20 years because if it, if it wasn't for the travel like there's there's no way i mean the air force i mean it, it's it's good i like i believe in the mission i i love being with with the people and everything but the you know b being stuck in the states p putting up with all of the you know all the additional crap that we have to do just the the day-to-day -day grind of having to be clean shaven dress a certain way be at certain stupid functions we don't want to be at pt writing epr you know all of the just extra crap that goes with it like, there's no way I would have stuck it out for 20 years. I no just way. realized for the first time in years that there actually is a tiny bit of me that actually does miss that a little bit. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? what? Uh, wait, what? <laughs> what? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I, right I know. I know. It's weird. Like, but but listening to, to Kent for a minute there, I was just like, yeah. I mean, like I said, I probably would have done eight. I would have done eight. I wouldn't have been opposed to that, but I'm I'm, yeah. cre I'm creeping up on 24. That's enough military bullshit. Um, Kent, what the <laughs> hell is Dorkly, man? Can you explain this to me real quick? <laughs> yeah, man. So I discovered something that was it was right up my alley. It's it's called Dorkly. It's a YouTube channel. David, have you seen Dorkly before? I have heard of it, and I probably have. It is it is awesome. It's these animated short films. They're like three minutes a piece. Like, I think the longest one I watched was like three, three and a half minutes long. And they're usually like a minute and a half, two minutes. And they're the ones that I watched were based on video games. So they'll take like Mario style animation and they'll have like a little animated, uh, comedy. Okay. Clip. Yeah. And Th this is where Sonic needs a job came from. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And these things are absolutely hilarious. I watched the entire Mario play playlist almost in one setting and it's just amazing if if you guys haven't seen dorkly the youtube channel absolutely check it out it is it is great fantastic uh, as soon as i saw sonic needs a job it it hit me like oh yeah because <laughs> the the sonic fandom has embraced its memory so strongly so as soon as i saw this yeah it it all came back to me with, <laughs> yeah, with so, sonic needs a job so so you're a Sonic fan then, I take it? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Sonic is, if there is one thing that I could say is like the center of my video game fandom, and what a pro what an appropriate time with the premiere of the Nintendo Switch to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. 
So, so wait yeah. a minute, wait a minute. Isn't Sonic a, a Sega game? Yeah. How in the yeah. world can it be on the Nintendo? That's weird. Well, it's 2017. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Sega is pretty much sticking to doing Japanese arcade games. They're not doing any consoles anymore, and they're just letting Sonic run free, as it were, on every console that will have it, uh, including uh, that whore. Nintendo systems. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. That's Back when I was a kid, there was a big divide between Nintendo kids and Sega kids. It was it was pretty much the the NES versus the Genesis. Genesis. And uh, I was definitely a Nintendo kid. It, it was the and, and it was the PlayStation I, I was Xbox a, uh, equivalent of its time. Right, it, exactly. It was, and and I was a Sega kid. I I had Nintendo friends. I, I don't judge. Never have. <laughs> But I, I always knew where where my bread and butter was, and that was with the blue bur blur. And now in <laughs> 2017, seeing Sonic Mania and the Project 2017 and seeing how the weird meme-obsessed Sonic fandom is really having this resurgence, it just it makes me feel alive while at the same time slightly ashamed, but not really. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let your geek flag fly, man. Whatever, whatever your geek is, let it fly, dude. That's and for anyone out there that that isn't already aware, if you follow the official Sonic the Hedgehog account on Twitter, uh, you will not be disappointed. Uh, it, even if you're not a big Sonic fan, it is something that is truly wonderful. If you love memes. And if you just love video game culture in general, the, the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account is is an absolute joy. Mm. Awesome. Amos, you were a Nintendo kid, too. Did, did you have any of the, the Sonic envy? Because I, I know I always did. Like I, I was like, man, Sega has one cool game, and it's Sonic the Hedgehog, and I wish they would put it on Nintendo. Sega, you have any? Sega had exactly one cool game, and... Oh well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't remember what it was because the only thing in my neighborhood was Nintendo. The first time I ever played a Sega was actually at Pat's house in Indiana. Oh, that's how yeah. deeply embedded into Nintendo I was. Yeah, that's a lot of people. A lot of like super duper like, diehard. Sega Nintendo was a machine at the arcade. Just... It was not something in the home. That just know nothing but Nintendo. Sega sat like, next to Neo Geo in the arcade. That's that's what I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I grew up with all of the <laughs> Sega systems until I eventually got a PlayStation, and then my older brother had a Dreamcast. So, with the exception of the old school Game Boy, Nintendo is something that I only know by periphery. So I'm the polar opposite. Like I said. The Nintendo Switch is coming out. Go for it, guys. I, I see Zelda. It looks really good. Uh, I saw Arms. That looks kind of cool. It kind of looks like a fighting game, w which is pretty sweet. So I, I go gotta, for it. Guys. I gotta say, the only thing I want the Nintendo for is the Zelda. Like I don't care about anything else at this point. That, 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 that is exactly any, any how Nintendo so property. many like diehard Nintendo fans are. It's just Zelda, Mario, and Metroid. Just just. Give me those. Right. Give me those, a, damn you. A, a new Metroid would be cool, but I just want the Zelda. Like, can I just rent the system, buy the <laughs> Zelda game, just keep that forever, and just borrow the rent the system anytime I needed it to? Like, that's all I care about. That's it. I'm, I'm hearing it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it, it doesn't taste very good is what I'm hearing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that That's going to be hitting YouTube soon. <gasps> oh, my God. So... Because of the small size of the the cartridges or whatever whatever they're calling them, they're basically like SD cards. Mm -hmm. The the games, and to keep keep it from being a a choking hazard for children, or at least mitigate the choking hazard for children, they they put some sort or of man children, but right, they put some sort of a coating on the plastic that makes it taste absolutely horrible. And of course, once once this news hit the world every freaking I, video game journalist i want to know in the who the hell was it this that was like ah oh, you know what 
Dude, look it up, man. Oh, Google it's, it. Look it's up. already gone viral. There, there are already like so many. Hey guys, what's up? I'm gonna taste the Nintendo Switch cartridge. Let's see how it tastes. Oh god, it's awful. This is my <laughs> reaction. It's terrible. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And cut. Done. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just the the, hey, can't the we, YouTubers. We just, we just got our next mini episode right there. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it kills me. It's not just the YouTubers and the the bloggers and and shit doing this. It's like the major the major video game journalists are doing this. It's video been, game journalists. Yeah, well, you know, if, if there is such a thing. <laughs> well, there is. But honestly, video game journalists are extremely fortunate people that get to do something very special for a living and that is true. some sometimes that involves licking game <laughs> cartridges <laughs> hell yeah amos uh what have you what have you what have you been doing lately you've been buying some stuff um yeah our washer and dryer just went out like nearly simultaneously last week and by by went out i mean the washer lost a few cycles and the dryer now makes a loud squealy noise and it's the wash and dryer that came with the house, which means the previous owners used used it to wash their dogs or whatever, <laughs> um, or as just a dumping ground of fur because that's pretty much is what that we took legal in Alaska? So I don't know. Um, but now we're gonna get rid of the evidence. We did some research. I went out and <laughs> and, and got a new wash and dryer. It's gonna get delivered, uh, actually, while I'm coming back from South by, and. It's it's one of those things, man. I, I didn't realize just how connected, like appliances were. I thought it was just a, a high end thing, you know. And we're actually getting a, a Samsung washer and dryer that's all connected and tells you when the shit's done, and everything else. And I'm like, now I get to geek out about washers and dryers. <laughs> Fucking sweet. So what, what does it do? Does it send you a text like, uh, "Hey, uh, go put me in the dryer"? I don't know. I'm going to find out. <laughs> I, th that will be my uh, my 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 on the spot reporting later on. Awesome. It's the, it's the internet of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're living we're living in the sci fi future, where you can get text notifications from your washing machine. Would, would it be linen net? Ooh, huh? I like it. I like it. I like it. I don't like it. I don't like it because <laughs> that makes me think of of um, you know fascist communist. Uh, you're thinking Lenin. Lenin yeah. Net. Oh, Lenin. Is that, that what we're talking about? No, like, we're not no, talking about, no. Uh, Linen, like the thing you put on. Linen. Well, well, the thing, the thing that some people wash and put on their beds, Kent. I don't know how you sleep, but is that is that the same thing that's like lying in state still to this day, many decades after his death? Yes. And we're yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly the same. And he's got some really <laughs> nice blankets. Really, like they change the comforters like every few months. They're really, really nice. I bet they start you know. to smell after a while. So that so makes wait, sense. does 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 linen again net? going back to when it starts to smell. <laughs> that's when they that's when the text notifications go out to to the people that maintain those things, and then they come and wash them. Um, oh, okay, well, well, that's convenient. That makes sense. I'm thinking linen net would would gauge its speed in thread count. What you think? I, that's. That's I mean, really high tech. That's that, like, that would that, be that, like I know Samsung stuff is really expensive, but <laughs> wow, that's that's super high tech. Oh, that's yeah, that's Samsung the, other thing. the dryer business now. Uh, they're in, they're in, Sa they're Samsung in the does businesses. everything. Yeah, they're in they, all the they do everything. They do dryers, washers, TVs, toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. They probably do some other things that I'm not entirely comfortable talking about. They, they do uh, they they do um, heating pads, aka phones. Ah, oh, good point. I've had a few of those. <laughs> Thankfully, no serious burns. I'm, I'm still here. No, no discernible Dane Bramage as of yet. That's, but... that's good. That's, <laughs> keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Yeah, that's that's important. Um. Uh, so apparently, recently there's been a lot of wrestling stuff, man. Like I, I'm not into this wrestling stuff. David, can you explain to me? Uh, why a generalized geek such as myself would want to get into the world of uh, professional wrestling? Why would a generalized geek get into the world of professional wrestling? This is not a dissimilar question that I've answered for the, the generalized geek when it comes to anime. 
And it really is as simple as this. People always say pro wrestling is a male soap opera. And simplifying it, yes, you could call it that. But so but, is the NFL. But the NFL, <laughs> but wrestling actually admits that it's planned. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Well put. In the case of pro wrestling, it is crazy characters, it is action, it is trashy schlock humor, it is world-class athleticism, it is Dwayne the Rock Johnson in his purest form, and it all does it with a loving wink and nod saying, "Yes, we know this is kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters in professional basketball, but you can come in, you can have fun, and you can suspend your disbelief, and you can learn to never headbutt a Samoan. That's a rule. Look it up. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. Oh, and that's okay. That it's is a, okay. Ever, ever since Ultimate Warrior tried to uh, clothesline Hulk Hogan or something like that, and it was like a four-foot gap in between – uh, Ultimate Warrior's arm and Hulk Hogan's chest. I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> when you were like seven years old. Yeah, and something like that. Don't believe in Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man. I was like, damn. Wait, what Hulk about Santa Claus? <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. Moving up. Moving uh, on. Moving past like, that. Um, I was like, wrestling's <laughs> fake. So glad I still got Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows Santa Claus yeah. and the Easter Bunny are total. I mean, r wrestling is predetermined. Yes. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Jesus, all of those, totally legit. <laughs> now, th this is it's it's important to it's it's, it's predetermined, but not necessarily scripted entertainment. It is predetermined to a point where the storylines and the feuds and the results of the matches are known ahead of time. But when the bell rings and the performers are in the ring. It's generally improvised. Right. Guys have their move sets. They, they may talk a little bit before the match, but generally what they say is, you know, you call it in the ring, as they say, where right. one of them or both, they are talking to one another live as it is happening, and they're actually having the match. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes as as there's actual physical content. Sometimes there isn't, and that is where the magic happens. And from what I understand, it's not always a scripted result either. Like sometimes it's just the flow of the match and how the crowd gets into it, and that that's how exactly. it's decided as well. So exactly. There, there, I mean, Generally, it's just the finish. Who is going to win? Who's going to get the one, two, three? Right. But yeah. from there, it, it's pretty much the guys or the girls out there kind of feeling it out, reading the crowd, because – it is live improv generally and just kind of playing it out how they see fit. And so, it's at, at its best. It is a brilliant art form of athleticism and performance. Yeah. I absolutely agree with everything you just said. I I'm a huge wrestling geek from way back in the day. I was, I was watching wrestling when I was four years old with my grandpa on a black and white TV. And I mean, as recently as uh, like two or three pay-per-views ago, I, I was watching it a little bit. Uh, but I haven't had the time in the last few years to really follow it the way that I used to. And honestly, the only thing that I watch anymore at all is WWE. I used to catch all the promotions. Now I barely have the time to do it and I miss it so much. Well, but Ken, I, I got to ask, there has been something that is uh, in, in the last year or so that really got a lot of viral attention in the wrestling world. And it was something that really captivated myself personally to the mm -hmm. point where I cosplayed this character. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Okay. Uh, has you caught anything on YouTube regarding broken Matt Hardy? Yes. So back in the day, like back in the late 90s, early 2000s, sure. the Hardy Boys mm -hmm. loved those dudes. I was always a big tag team fan. My my uh, first favorite tag team was the Killer Bees back in the early 80s. I don't know if you remember those guys. So but... I take it you're not a big Iron Sheik fan. No. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I'm more of a fan now, now that I, I kind of 
uh, you know, know the know the behind the scenes stories, and uh, I've watched like the the documentary on the guy, and he's an interesting person. We'll just we'll leave that there. Yes. Uh, but yes. I hated the character. He was the the baddest heel. I hated him. Uh, but I've always been a fan of tag teams, and when when Matt and Jeff came onto the scene, I couldn't get enough of them. Just the high flying, the teamwork between them, just the the charisma that they presented in the ring. Always loved them, and yeah, over the past several months, I have seen a, a a trend on my Twitter of people talking about broken Matt Hardy. So about a week or so ago, I had to finally see what all the fuss was about, and this is in the Impact promotion or the the TNA promotion. <laughs> This is total nonstop action, aka Impact Wrestling. Uh, yes, where Matt Hardy has been given total creative freedom, and in the last couple of years or so, he has uh, Matt Hardy over the years has been known for evolving his character many, many times. Yeah, you had Matt 2.0. Um, uh, you had a uh, big money Matt, yeah, iconic right. Matt. And, right. and that eventually led to what we now see as broken Matt Hardy. And it really caught a lot of attention, uh, especially for not being in WWE. It really caught a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, he like back when they first started, he was kind of like the bland guy. Like Jeff was always the uh, a lot of people would call him a spot monkey. He was the one always, you know, doing the the high flying thing. He was jumping off the thirty foot ladders, yes, uh, jumping off the jumbotron, just doing whatever, whatever to be to be the guy in the spotlight. And Matt has been more. He seemed to be to be like the more the smart one. The uh, he, he the, was the workhorse of of the team, right? And mm -hmm. uh, the one that kind of did. I guess you could say a lot of their creative ideas, a lot of their storyline ideas, a lot of the, the character stuff, a lot of that was Matt. And right. he's always kind of been underrated more for his wrestling mind. And in rec recent times with the emergence of this crazy, insane, metaphysical, broken Matt character where he – where in a match against Jeff, he – got toppled on from the top of the arena uh, through a table. Matt's brain was awakened by the seven deities, and he grew this white streak and grew mystical powers and gained the an final... He, he gained this broken accent mm -hmm. uh, as part of his broken condition, and we had, which led us to the final deletion, the, the Matt Hardy production that ended up going viral where it was essentially Matt and Jeff doing what they've done forever backyard wrestling in their home in North Carolina, which is something they've been doing forever before, during even now throughout their entire wrestling career and it went viral. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Th this is a, the type of storyline that if, if I wasn't interested in wrestling anymore, if I had just forgotten about it, this, this is a storyline that, absolutely would have brought me back in because it's got it's got everything it's got the the physicality the amazing talent of jeff and matt and the opponents that they've been facing and just that the just grandiose theatrical elements to it that just and, and matt to his credit has taken that to its most logical extreme to where he he realizes that the cat is kind of out of the bag with pro wrestling so he decided to just go all the way and just say, hey, there are the seven deities. I have a broken condition. I have supernatural powers. There is a lesbian drone that can teleport. <laughs> yes, they, they teleported to Mexico. Yep. <laughs> and they are on the expedition of gold to, to capture every tag team championship in the world so that the Hardy all Boys the will be known— space. <laughs> the greatest tag team in the history of space and time. They've taken on champions in Mexico. They took on the Rock and Roll Express for Tag Team Apocalypto. And it, it's just, it is, it, as they say, it is Matt Hardy's broken brilliance. And as someone who has really never stopped watching wrestling and, and someone who really doesn't get excited by 
a lot of it anymore. This being as insane as it is, is exactly what I needed. Which is unfortunate because it just came out yesterday that Matt Hardy is leaving TNA Wrestling and it seems like the broken saga is probably over and now I'm sad. Yeah, is there is there... I heard rumors that he's going to WWE. Is that confirmed or is that just uh, something that's out there? Nothing set in stone. As of right now, he's going to be... Uh, he and Jeff will be having a much-talked-about match in Ring of Honor against Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks. Yeah, that that should be awesome. I, I really need to get back into wrestling. I need to manufacture some time so that I can really get back into it. Um, speaking of fighting, um, there's some uh, new fighting games coming out that um, I think we're all excited yeah. about. Yeah. Now, this is crazy. Just, just today, both uh, two fighting games, because I love fighting games, uh, released trailers this morning, and, and it's amazing that they released them at the same time, pretty much. Tekken 7, which is coming out in June, and Injustice 2, the sequel to the DC fighting game created by NetherRealm Studios behind Mortal Kombat. Uh, they released uh, character trailers for uh, Eddie Gordo from Tekken 7, one of the iconic characters of the Tekken franchise, the, the Capoeira fighter, Eddie Gordo, uh, for for you fighting game fans, you you know Eddie Gordo, and for Injustice Two, uh, the DC character that was announced in, in the trailer today, very interesting choice that I was not totally aware of, Doctor Fate, and that's actually really really interesting. I I did not know Doctor Fate was going to be in this game, and. As a DC fan, I'm I'm definitely intrigued. Amos, have you played any of the earlier iterations of games in this fr these franchises? Um, of course, I played uh, Tekken at Jeremy's place for a uh, final year or so, back on the uh, the original PlayStation, I believe. Yeah, nice. Tekken Two is actually what what got me into the franchise. It was an arcade game, actually, back when we were in tech school at Shepard Air Force Base. And that's what that's what got me hooked on it, and uh, I've kind of been a fan ever since. I'm I haven't been gaming a whole lot in the last couple of years, but I've I've kind of tried to follow. Honestly, me either. Like my gaming interest usually revolves around Tekken, mm -hmm. and the last Tekken game was Tekken Tag Tournament Two, which came out a few years ago. So now that Tekken Seven is about to come out. In the last year or so, I found myself really getting back into video games uh, and fighting games specifically because that's really always been my favorite genre. Yeah, so, yeah. Tekken Seven looks really good. It, it, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's true to form. It's back to the basics. Uh, not that, not that Tekken is really straight too far from the basics. Um, Except Akuma's in it. Really? Yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, I don't know. It looks, it looks. But it looks awesome. Really refined and it looks awesome. Uh, now, what you were saying about Injustice 2, Dr. Fate, I did watch the Dr. Fate character trailer uh, just today, in fact, and um, I'm kind of excited about that. Dr. Yeah. Fate is one of those one of those characters that, like, the casual, who the hell is Dr. Fate? Right, and, right. And the, even with the first Injustice game, they did a really okay balance of having pretty well-known DC characters and, and having a few kind of surprise picks mm -hmm. with injustice 2 um, right now the the two characters that I want to play aren't exactly the most well-known DC characters one being dr. fate and two black canary uh, black canary's trailer was like wow I really want to play her she looks really really cool and the success of the Injustice games, uh, it shows that DC still has some things that they do well, like the animated movies. Uh, and everyone raves about the story mode in the Injustice games. So if you haven't had the chance, that's also something to, to look forward to. Now, the one thing being... that stood out for me in the, uh, I think it was the release trailer, when they, they had they basically showed the storyline trailer. Superman 
punches through someone's chest. Yes. It was a lot more graphic than I was expecting. Did yeah. You that, Amos? I was saying that as a non comic book nerd that I am, I have never played Injustice, but it looks pretty good. Oh, it's it's great. If, uh, like I said, it was made by NetherRealm Studios, the people behind Mortal Kombat, uh, and you know they know fighting games, obviously. So it's it, Injustice is great. It's it's a really fun game. You can play as Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter. Uh, believe it or not, Aquaman in the first game is actually pretty cool. He his, is, yeah. His super his super. His super move in the first Injustice game is easily the coolest. You get eaten by a giant shark a la Sam Jackson in Deep Blue Sea. And, <laughs> yes. and yeah, the, the Injustice games, even if you're not a super comic book nerd, which I am not, I'm not by any means. Yeah, the, the Injustice games are tons of fun. And, yeah. and if anybody out there wants to talk more fighting games... Please, I'm I'm all about that. I'm about that life, especially now in 2017, where it looks like fighting games are really resurgent. So, yeah, it's um, it's it. I think right now is a good time for pretty much all video games. And yes. fighting games are, are definitely the genre that that at least to me is is really starting to shine. Yeah. <laughs> Amos, what else you got? Um, I just wanted to mention uh, something from a while ago for us, something that came through. Um, this right here, Mystery Science Theater 3000, better known affectionately as MST3K, is coming to Netflix April 14th. They did it. They did all but the last of their, their, reach go their, their stretch goals, and we're going to get some new MST3K. And yeah, I I should not be as as excited about this as I am. No, you absolutely should be excited. MST3K is worth all your excitement. Yeah, it absolutely exactly. is. Yes, I cannot wait. Tom Servo, uh, Crow. I God, I cannot wait, man. Yeah. Th this is actual MST3K, not riff yeah. tracks. This is Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's, yeah. I'm so excited for this. And shout out to Netflix for for doing this and making this happen. I mean, I c can I say MST3K and chill? Right. It, is that all right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that? Oh my God. I yeah. love that. Uh, th this, uh, it just, it harkens to the days when you'd watch MST3K and I know, especially when, it, when I first started watching it, I didn't know what the hell it was. Like it, there was no premise given if you didn't catch the little one minute intro. There was no premise. It was just a guy on a spaceship with a bunch of weird ass robots bagging on some really, really shitty movies. And here it is, you know, 10, 10 20 years later. It's just probably, yeah, super, probably 15. So, super yeah. excited to see this. This is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's, God. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how excited I am for this. So good. Uh, so, David. On this show, we play a game called Hot Takes. Ooh, yes. I mean, you guys know I do a sports show, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So the way, the way that we do it on our, on our show is we give you about a minute and some topics, and I'm going to shout them out, and then you're going to say whatever comes to your mind. You're going to rant and rave and just say Whatever it is you want to say about that topic until you hear that sound right there. Yes. And you stop talking and get your next topic, and then you just go. Like I said, I host a sports show. I'm all about the hot takes. Let's do this damn thing. Let's go. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. All right, David, even though we already covered this, I'm going to hit it again. Dr. Fate, am I right? Hell yes, Dr. Fate looks awesome. This is a character that, in comparison to all of the other Injustice characters, actually looks halfway interesting. I mean, Superman, Batman, uh, Harley Quinn, we all saw them. Roman Reigns, am I right? He's actually not that bad, and I think a lot of the internet wrestling community really needs to chill the fuck out. He's actually pretty good. <laughs> Andre Meadows, am I right? 
this guy, I mean, what can you even say about this guy? I mean, there, there's just no words. It's, it's absolutely inexplicably. I, I literally can't even. As I say. <laughs> Tay Allen, am I right? I love her to death. She is a godsend. She is an angel. She is a treasure to mankind. I love you, Tay. <laughs> I love you very much. The Ritual Misery Podcast, am I right? The Ritual Misery Podcast is something that everyone should enjoy and hopefully be worthy enough to be a guest on. Oh, my God. <laughs> awesome. I, it it always perfect. excites me when people can't say <laughs> say the name of the show quite right. It, like Something about... <laughs> I always got offended by it until uh, Oh Doctor like called this out on having the difficult to say name, and then since then, anytime yep. someone screws Look, it up, I'm just like, at yeah. least give me a little credit for getting the reference at the beginning and saying Pain Monopoly. <laughs> at least I got the reference at the beginning, okay? <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, hey, uh, was... we got a, we got a couple more uh, topics to cover. One, what do you guys think about uh, products for sale on the internet? As many of them are getting bad reviews due to the customer service of the company that makes the product. And instead of uh, like reviewing the product itself. It's yes. Yes, exactly. I, cause, and, and the reason, obviously I've done a lot of research here lately with the purchases and things like that. Um, and I came across this a lot and I was just like, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think customer reviews, especially related to customer service, are pretty much maybe about a half step about Facebook comments. I, I think you have to take them with maybe about a, a teaspoon and a half of salt because people are usually giving one-star reviews when they're mad and they're not thinking clearly, kind of like with Facebook comments where nobody's thinking clearly. So I just... It, you kind of have to take take them with a grain of salt. I mean, I just saw someone earlier today talk about how they got a one-star review uh, because their dog had a problem with uh, throwing up something that shouldn't have been in their mouth to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even making that up. You know, I, I'm with you on this. I, I think, like, the especially the outlier uh, customer reviews – where somebody just gives it a one and says that, you know, worst experience of my life, uh, you know, just dis discard those. But if, if the thing has 700 reviews and 550 of them are all saying worst customer service experience ever, you kind of got to put some weight in that. though. No, oh, absolutely. I, but I, but I it takes, but it takes that many reviews and, and you kind of look at the star ratings and you see how it averages out. Uh, when when you get something that has a thousand reviews and then you see it kind of averages out to be like a two, that's when you say, okay, th this is where you might have to stop for a second. But mm -hmm. generally, that isn't most things that you see online. It's usually either a few ones, a few fives, and then you find the rest in the middle. Um, right. For me, it's kind of it's almost kind of a pet peeve because I I almost feel like the reviews for the company itself should be separate. There there's so many times that I've had a great product built by a shitty company, or uh, a, a, like like a really good company has built just one off bad products. And to me, my OCD mind wants to separate the two and feels that everyone should separate the two. But obviously, that's not uh, not congruent to to. Well, you know, nowadays so many companies have customer satisfaction surveys and, and customer ratings and, and all of those things where if you do have some kind of service, you can ask to see how it went and, and how your service was uh, in comparison to the products. And that is something that the company does get feedback on at least. So at least that's something you can give to them as opposed to giving a one-star review. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wish that there was like two separate ratings. So like you can rate the product on the product's merit, but then rate your experience, and that goes against like the store's overall rate. So essentially what we want is co uh, uh, consumer reports to be free so we can get to all of them <laughs> all the time. 
Yes, <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be that would be amazing. All right. Um, last up, the uh, what? What the hell is Poppy? Poppy? Well, it's well, she's Poppy. Uh, I mean, uh, but... Apparently, but I. You put this link in the show notes, and I opened it up, of course, because that's what I do when people put links in my show notes. <laughs> and I'm looking at it, I'm like, is this something that I should even know about? Or is like, I I don't know how, how to take Poppy. <laughs> so so can you explain Poppy to us? Or haven't you just explained everything today? What, what the hell is Poppy? <laughs> Poppy is a pop star who may or may not be an android who may or may not be the greatest thing in the history of YouTube and might also be a cult, but might also not be a cult. Uh, it is the creation of the young lady we see, Poppy, and a gentleman by the name of Titanic Sinclair. It, it might also be a critique of the internet itself. Uh, it, it, there are interpretations that say that Poppy herself is a manifestation of the internet and everything that surrounds Poppy is that reaction. And is as someone who is obsessed with meta humor and referential humor, <laughs> Poppy <laughs> is everything to me because I am constantly looking through the fourth wall and I love Poppy. Poppy is everything to me. <laughs> I feel really and a few. A few I, of the songs are pretty decent. Getting, it's, it's kind of like, kind of like electro pop, and and I'm, pretty I'm, okay. I'm getting a real Jared vibe here, and I don't. I'm not quite <laughs> sure why. It's just, it seems a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little out there, but you've just gotta let it. If you go on a YouTube dive on Poppy's YouTube channel, it it will. It'll either click and you'll love it, or you'll I, be terrified and you'll want to bleach it, your it, mind. It I, looks like live action anime to me. Well, that's probably why I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it, it, no secret, anime is kind of my thing. So, yeah, that that's probably why. But but it is, it is weird. It's Poppy it's, is weird. It's a little weird. But Poppy is also wonderful. It, it's There's a also weird. a mannequin and a plant and a skeleton <laughs> and a few decent pop songs. So, so is uh, is she singing in more than one of these uh, more than one of these 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 videos? Because I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, uh, her actual music videos uh, are either on her official channel or her Vivo channel, uh, one or the other. Her official channel is there a storyline going on? I, Maybe, uh, I, but it also might be her and Titanic Sinclair just kind of throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks and seeing how people interpret it. I see Jeez. this, and all, all I think of is someone is fucking with me. Someone is fucking oh. with me right now. <laughs> looking at, I and I and I. I will and say yes and no. The I'll answer see, to that is yes and no. I think you're fucking with me by putting that in the show notes. <laughs> That's what I think is happening. <laughs> That's awesome. There, no, the, the truth is. I genuinely love this, but I'm Poppy. also kind of insane. I'm not normal. <laughs> like I'm really, really broken. So, oh man, yeah. So but you're Poppy is wonderful to me. You were saying that you're an anime guy. Do you ha perhaps have a podcast where you talk about anime? Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, I have an anime podcast of some sort with my friend Jack, uh, where we talk about anime, games, and just general weeaboo shit, as they say. Uh, I, I have another one called It's in Season, where my friends Cody and Shay, we talk about a couple of anime airing each season, uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall. And uh, those are my two podcasts about the animus, the Japanimation, as they used to call it back in the day. Mm. Yes, I remember when it was Japanimation. What, uh, what, other, what other shows do you host? Oh, well, there's also the flagship uh, with my buddy, uh, the venerable King Kaz of Drunk Kids Gaming, uh, which they affectionately call Shooting the Shit with Two Nerdy Black Guys. I don't like the name. I've never cared for the name, except I'm the one that hosts and produces everything. 
Uh, I'm also the producer and recorder and editor of the show Sports Odds and Ends, the sports show for the Fly by Night sports fan, where King has and uh, our buddy Jerry Vin, JVZ, talk about the week in sports and stories from the sports world that may or may not fall through the cracks and Draymond Green occasionally kicking people. Hmm. Hmm. That well, sounds mean, awful. That, that's what happens, though. That's that's how that breaks down. A lot. So- he, we, he, got, he kicks people often. We've got another piece of business that uh, that we need to cover. Yeah, uh, Kent, Kent, I see this. What What is this, man? What What is this right here? So we uncovered, because as we do here on Ritual Misery, we, we do research on our guests. Digging into the past. Yeah, and we found out that unbeknownst to most people, possibly even David himself, uh, because of his broken mind, it, he used to be a writer of horror movies, and we yes. uncovered yes, we uncovered I, uh, uh, one of his old movies, and here's kind of a, a review that we found that someone has written about his movie. Do you want to do you want to read it for us, Amos? Um, I'll, I'll read it, but see, one of the things that we're missing here, we didn't get a title, so um, what we're gonna have to do is. Uh, uh, I'm going to read this this out, and then you're going to have to tell us what the title was at the end of it. Is that cool, David? Absolutely. Right. It's it's always great to to dust off the old history and, and jump to back in the day, as All the right. kids like to say. Can't <laughs> wait. Here is a, here is a scene from a classic David horror movie. This the movie is referred to as the television of tasting. It opens on an old deserted home, and we hear hedgehogs howling. We move in, and we see. That four people, I can already tell that this is mine. There are hedgehogs involved. <laughs> we move in and we can see that four people are standing by an, by a catch-all grave. One says, absolutely, and the others all nod their, nod their ears. And then they shove a weird box into the grave. The box is a customer coffin and it is open. Inside is a pale, dead cat that has a stake through its mind. Then the people start throwing characters into the grave singing, girls, girls, girls. They stop kind of when an enormous bat flies down and says, I am the spirit of Count Matt Hardy and a member of the singing dead. I am going to come back and get all of you products. Then the corpse corpse sits up and shouts, give it to me. Now, David, what the hell movie was that? Where can, where can we find that on the old uh, on the old Netflix? Uh, that was uh, my 1982 classic, Savage Ernie Thursday. Uh, it stars Jennifer Jason Lee, and uh, it, it's one of my my earlier flicks. Uh, it, it was a bit raw, uh, as they say, mm. but uh, I, I think it'll hold up if you check it out on on the Netflix. I, I think it holds up. All right, go go uh, go find that on the old Netflix, uh, the the Amazon Prime. I think you know my my. It is Savage better. Ernie Thursday. Savage Ernie Thursday. <laughs> there you go. And if anybody wants to leave a review for that, where where can they find you on the internet so that they can? Well, if you feel so inclined as to follow me on the Twitter Twitter, you can do so at Just Call Me DJM, and you can also check out the mothership, if you will, Delta Juliet Mike dot com. Now, you can say tweet or twatter, but you can't say tweet a twat. So there's some problems <laughs> over there. Um, Kent, where can, uh, where can people tweet your twat? <gasps> oh, my twat can be tweeted. I don't know what that means. At rm underscore del noche. <laughs> or if you're a beer guy and you want to you wanna, uh, t- uh, toast my tot or something, I don't know. <laughs> you, you can get on untapped and find me username del noche on there. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I'm at Ethan Kane, E T H C E T H A N C A I N E. Um, I want to tell you about a little project that I've been doing, man. Some people already know this. Uh, Owen O Doctor J J Stone O Doc something. I don't know. O oh, Doctor O oh, Doctor has some shows on on uh, the old Diamond Club TV. The one I want to tell you about right now is on Mondays. Uh, sh- Shite. It's 6 p.m. Central, I believe. Uh, it's called IQMZ Sports. We do it yep. live. It's uh, uh, O-Docta and, and a buddy of his, Jason. And they, they, throw, they go through the, 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 the stories from the week of sports. But if you've ever heard O-Docta talk about anything, that's how he treats the week in sports. 
Jason yep. comes in with the stats. Oh, doctor's got the commentary. It's a great time. It lasts about an hour. Plus, whenever he, they want to stop talking. I and, do uh, have to add, it has world-class producing. That that there. it does. That it does. Uh, <laughs> some completely rando is out there producing the show. <laughs> but uh, that's on DiamondClub.tv. There's one and... thing I know. It's about being a rando that produces a sports show. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> So good times on that. Um, uh, stopping by DiamondClub.tv on Mondays. Uh, shites. I believe it's at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, the Pacific in the time zone. Um, and, of course, dude, we're, we're going to be at South by next week. Yeah, man. Uh, so I was alluding to that in the beginning of the show. We've been super busy getting things ready for the live show. So for those of you uncool kids not in the know, we will be – on 6th Street in Austin at Darwin's Pub a week from now, a week from today, on the 9th? It's the 9th, right? Yes. yes. The 9th of March, <laughs> next Thursday, we will be at Darwin's Pub. It's on 6th Street. Check it out on Google. You can find it. It's super easy. Or just tell your Uber driver. Oh, wait. They don't have Uber. Just no. tell your Lyft driver. Oh, shit. No. Uh, no uh, Lyft? No Lyft? No Uber? <laughs> wow. Man, uh, so you might actually find, have to find walk a ride. <laughs> uh, so find a yeah. ride down Hitch, to Sixth Street. Hitch hike up to Sixth Street. <laughs> yes, uh, we're gonna be there from about four to seven p.m. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a, a big Diamond Club meetup. Uh, there's man, there's gonna be so many people there. If you're not there, you are missing. Mm. The it is kicking off the South by mm. Soap Wasted weekend. It is, like I said, four to seven p.m. From 5 to 6 p.m., sandwiched right in the middle of the meetup, Ish. Ritual Ish. Misery Podcast is going to put on our very first live performed show. And I can't wait, man. Uh, good, good luck, guys. Good I, luck. I, yeah. I, 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 but as Ritual Misery does, we bribe people to <laughs> support us in the things that we do. Uh, we've got some things for them, man. You wanna you wanna, um, you wanna tell them a little real, bit about what it, what's quick, gonna be happening. Real quick, we're gonna have a guest there. Um, it, it just so happens that everyone we're asking to be our guest, our surprise guest, is either a not gonna be there this year for the first time in ever, b uh, <laughs> arriving via airplane at the same time the show goes live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, <laughs> Or is likely to be too drunk to be any any can any help at all, uh, uh, <laughs> Junior. I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> we will have a guest, though. We will have a special guest. <laughs> Games, that's, that's prizes, crazy. and uh, swag to be had. So come on by. Uh, also, the food and the drink there is just awesome. Yeah, if, if you guys have never been to Darwin's Pub, it's absolutely great. We, for the last couple of years, we have gone to Darwin's just as, you know, this is a place that we like to hang out. And they have great food. Uh, the prices are, are pretty good. The uh, customer service is phenomenal there. You will you will want to tip the uh, the people that are helping you out there. But one thing that I that I want to say to entice people to, to come there, other than the fact that you're going to see all of your chat realm buddies there already, uh, during the show, we are going to be playing some games. And what do uh, winners of games get? They get prizes. Fabulous that, prizes. That's Fabulous. right. Yeah, well, hopefully. What prizes. do we have for them, Amos? <laughs> uh, 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 we're gonna we're gonna bring some uh, uh, some stickers. Um, uh, may, some maybe some stickers. used pencils. I like used pencils. Eh, I don't know about the pencils, but we definitely have stickers. We have RMP stickers. We've got Diamond Club stickers. We've got T-shirts. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Um, it's going to be such a great time, and you're probably going to walk away with something, whether it's a uh, – if you show up to the event wearing a Ritual Misery T-shirt, you're going to get a beer bought for you by me, so the T-shirt will pay for itself. Boom. Um, you're likely to get some sort of a prize. I almost, almost guarantee that you're going to walk away with something from RMP. Uh, so definitely come – Check us out. Uh, we'll put some stuff out on. Or, or don't, the... don't, because if you don't come by, it'll be cheaper for us. What? Well, there's that. There's that. <laughs> I, but I encourage you, because one of the times of the year that I do splurge, uh, you know, there's Christmas and then there's South By. Yeah. Uh, 
So that's I, I set aside some money to 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 one spend. One day, yeah. One, one of day. one of them is great for the kids. The other one's the worst thing ever for the liver. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, if, if you got, if you want to send some feedback to this show, tell us how good we did, or just uh, you know just bitch at us about something like the fact that the stream just dropped a few minutes ago and came back. Uh, rit- Ritual Misery Podcast at gmail Go ahead and shoot us an email. We might even read it on air. We're gonna read it, and uh, probably read it. God, you read those? You actually validate these idiots? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, we're all about validating here. I think. What's what's, uh, what's validating you mean, Kent? What's validating? <laughs> we'll talk about it after. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what she said. Um, <laughs> hey, it's about time to hit this little button right here. Um, I want to sp- send a special thank you to everyone at Diamond Club because we're going to South by to hook up with you guys and um, and party, and it's just a great time. So. Um, thank you so so much and thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your theme music for uh, for David and for Kent and for me this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program (laughs) 